you've found your way to the Winning Tactics podcast with host Adam Sinkis. Adam discusses winning tactics with small business owners and entrepreneurs, uncovering processes and introducing the tools and solutions for enhancing the bottom line. Thanks again for finding your way to the Winning Tactics podcast and now your host, Adam Sinkis. Welcome to another wonderful episode of the Winning Tactics Podcast. As as you all know, I'm your host, Adam Sinkis. Uh, we are coming to you from the snowy north in Michigan. Uh, a little out of, out of play from my normal uh, Florida life, but uh, happy to have uh, Dr. Kelly Henry here uh, today. We're going to really be diving down customer service, uh, and I think this is so critical for small businesses uh, super excited to to hit this, um, you know, and, and welcome to the show. It was just uh, glad to have you on. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on the show, Adam. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on your fantastic show. So as you mentioned, Dr. Kelly Henry, I'm actually a retired chiropractor and I practiced uh, for 20 years, mainly in New Mexico, where I was able to build up a couple of successful clinics. And in 2018, I uh, sold out and retired from active practice to actively coach and consult with small businesses on how to improve and implement better customer service protocols so they could uh, basically grow and profit because of that, uh, because of that information. Well, fantastic. So excited to have you on. You know, customer service is, is really the thing right you know at the end of the day our customers are are our livelihood and uh we we had on a, a couple of weeks ago uh we talked about the internal messaging um you know and, and building your brand with your team um but uh you know I, I think at the end of the day there there's a lot to be said with just talking about what it takes to really care for a customer um and so I want to start this conversation with the, the question, what makes customers unhappy? You know, I, I think we've all had bad experiences in customer service, but but what are some of those intrinsic things that make customers unhappy? Well, the, the number one thing that will cause a customer to, to leave a business is when they feel unappreciated. I mean, it's that simple. Just feel unappreciated, whether it's, you know, they feel like they're a number or they feel like they're just a transaction or just feel like they're just another sale um, instead of feeling like they're part of the family or or to be valued. I always like to say, you know, we want to make our customers feel like rock stars. Well, when you don't do that and that customer feels like, you know, you're just there to make some more money off of them, they're going to have a wandering eye and, and, and leave your business. So that that's the that's the big one. Feeling unappreciated, causing a customer to feel unappreciated will uh, will basically shove them right out the door. What are, what are some things in your experience uh, that you see businesses doing that cause cause customers to feel unappreciated? What are some of those behaviors? Well, basically, they just don't try to create relationships with their customers. So they don't, you know, they don't communicate. They don't try to get to know the customer. Um, it's just all about the sale um, and and what the customer can do for the business instead of how the business and what the business can do for the customer. And so, you know, if if the business isn't particularly friendly, you know, if they're not, uh, they don't have a great first impression of hello, how are you? How can we help you? Those type of things, or you know, the, the classic, the, the employee ignores, you know, sees somebody that may need some help and they go the other direction. Or if there's a problem, you know, a customer's had a problem with the business and uh, the excuse game or the blame game comes up um, and they, you know, they, the employees or the business blames the customer, all those things, again, create and, and build up that uh, the feeling of not being appreciated and not as you should from a consumer standpoint, when I'm giving you money, you know, for your service, for your product, you know, there, there should be some respect. There's some, some appreciation for me doing that. And there's so many businesses that just missed the boat on that particular aspect. 
You know, I, I've taught customer service for a long time in the call center industry. And, and one of the things that I always, uh, I always ask in my customer service training classes is, um, what is your experience like at the grocery store? Because, you know, I, I, I find it doesn't matter the chain. It doesn't matter the, the grocery store where you live in the country. You know, you go up to the cash register and the, the whole transaction, uh, the whole time you're there is very transactional. It doesn't matter what grocery store you go to. And it's like, you know, I, I literally have waited an extra five to 10 minutes in a line because I knew the cashier was going to talk to me and treat me like a person and focus on me. And, and so like, I always thought, I always find that like so interesting, you know, <laughs> it's that transactional versus personal uh, experience. And, and I think a lot of people, you know, can relate to uh, relate to that as well. Absolutely. You know, I, I love, and I, I'm the same way going to grocery stores are a good kind of, uh, a good representation of a lot of what uh, customer service is uh, a bad customer service, if you will, you know, and I've had several times where, you know, I go through the checkout lane and the, and the, uh, the checker, the cashier is talking to another employee and just scanning my, you know, scanning my items, doesn't say a word to me, is still con conversing with the, the other employee, you know, the, the bagger, go through the whole transaction, you know, I slip in my car, do everything, and they don't say a word to me. It did, like you said, it just kind of kind of cracks me up. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> you know, another thing I like to dive down, you know, is is why as customers, right, why, why do we seem to remember the negative experiences versus the positive experiences with a business? What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it really boils down to human nature. Uh, we tend to just gravitate to the negative, unfortunately, um, really, really in everything, whether it's, you know, situations with our families or uh, situations that, you know, at, at where you work and, and employees, those type of things, we just tend to to latch on to the negative. So it's really no different when we are interacting with a, a business, when we are the consumer, unfortunately. And that's something that businesses just have to acknowledge and understand and deal with. Um, they can't change that. So one of the statistics I like to like to use and, and communicate is it takes 12 positive experiences to make up for that one bad experience. Um, the problem is about 40 to 50 percent of consumers will leave a business never to return after one bad experience. So you may not ever get the 12, the chances for the 12 positive experiences to make up for that one bad one. So that's how critical it can be. It's not, you know, it's not dropping the ball. We all do that and, and we have issues. But when we're doing it consistently, you're just pushing customers right out the door. And most of them, 90% of them won't complain. They won't say a word. They'll just, they're just gone. They're going to your competitor. They're out the door. See you later. Never to return. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's, I think that's really interesting. Um, you know, in, in the respect that I, I've asked people when, you know, when is the time you've had exceptional customer service and you, you know, and, and I get a bunch of blank stares and, and a few vague stories. I'm like, yeah, you don't you don't remember really anything about the transaction, so that was not exceptional. That was just right. your you, you met you, your expectations were met at that moment. It, it was satisfactory. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what? What are your thoughts on uh, on on that? It, do how do we strive as a business to push into that exceptional space? Really, it's pretty easy to be honest with you. Um, and, and what I teach, what I coach and help businesses do is just to understand and to do the simple things, the simple actions that make customers feel valuable, but do it on a consistent basis. That's the key because you can have great actions and you can try to wow the customers. But if you don't do it on a consistent basis, then it's good. at You're, you're, you're virtually not helping your customer service because, again, like we just mentioned, they'll remember the negatives. They'll remember the, the, the times you let them down. So the key is just doing the simple things over and over 
consistently, that is what is going to drive up the perception that your business has great customer service, which creates loyalty and retention and ex uh, exponential growth and profits out of that. Absolutely fantastic. Let's let's shift gears because you, you started to talk about growth and profits, right? And and, and those are clearly uh, impacts of of what customer service, good customer service, can do for your business. Uh, what are some of the other positive impacts that that you notice in businesses aside from the money? Which let, let's be honest, the money's great, right? <laughs> it, it is. So you know, there's nothing wrong with making extra money. So um, you know, growth and profits, obviously. Increased retention is really the key to growth and profits. So, so many, well, the, the purpose of a business is to get customers, you know, you market it and you advertise to get more customers. Then you want to keep those customers and then you have to turn a profit so you can stay in business. But so many businesses miss the, miss that middle opportunity to keep the customers. They get so focused on just acquiring new customers and then do very little to keep them. And so, when you improve your customer service, that is the key to retention and, and to slow down the churn of customers leaving your business. The more you keep, the bigger you grow, the more profit you make. Another fantastic aspect of improving customer service, if you're doing it correctly, if it's not just a flavor of the month, but as you change the culture in the business, your employees grasp onto it. And when your employees are being treated better, um, and when they are feeling valuable and when they're feeling important, um, you reduce the, the turnover of employees. You make it a better atmosphere where the employees and the ownership and the managers, they're all getting along. And there's there's just a better working atmosphere uh, where people love to come to work um, and they want to they want to provide great customer service because they feel like they're valued and feeling like they're an important part of that business. So that's another huge aspect of improving customer service if, if done properly. Yeah, I love that. You know, I I think I think you hit the nail on the head, right? It's it's all about retention, both both with your customers and your employees. And Absolutely. you know, um, I think as people people see their overall impact in a business, they become happier, they become more challenged, they they push themselves harder, and as a result, uh, your customers see that effort too. And and so it's uh it, it's kind of a you know it's kind of a double-edged sword is that you got to balance down the middle and, and and really you know uh master keeping your employees happy as well as your customers happy in that total cycle i always liken it to this as a leader or as a business owner uh my customers i, I have two customers in my business right i have my employees they're my customers Absolutely. Um, and I have and I have my customers that are paying my employees, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and so, um, you know, it's I, I take a lot of the same philosophies that I would apply to my customers, my, my normal customers and apply that to my internal team and, and keep them happy as customers as well. Um, and, I, and I think that's really important. Um, you know, you, you mentioned you, you mentioned a little bit about, um, you know, it, about how happy employees or happy customers keep coming back. Um, is there ways that, that you can get involved in, in your local community to help push that message that you're a customer centric organization out there? There is. Um, what I found out is the best way to do it, though, is just start doing it. Uh, because word spreads, you know, in general, and I'm just generalizing here, the, the companies that say they provide great customer service, we are customer centered, you know, we provide great customer service <laughs> are usually the ones that don't, <laughs> they don't, you know, their, their actions speak louder than their words. The businesses that are really very customer centered and really provide that stellar customer service and do those actions that make each and every customer feel valued each and every time they're interacting with the businesses, people can feel that. Um, and when people feel that they want to spread the word about that. And so, you know, referrals and, and um, which are the best kind of advertising, you know, that referred the customer back into the business. Um, that is generally the best way to, to basically cause the community to know is just start in the business and let the, uh, let your customers do the do the talking for you. 
Yeah, you know, I love that. Um, we we authenticity is a buzzword these days. Um, but you know, there there is an air about being truly genuine in, in your intentions, and uh, you know, I I think I. I, I'm always of the school of show me, don't tell me, show me. Uh, and, and and I think that that fits a lot of people, especially in the customer service space. Um, you know, but it, if you have to profess that you're the number one in customer service in, in the county or whatever, um, you, you're just you're trying to boast something that isn't genuine, I think, at that point. And exactly. So, uh, it, the, the message uh, is oftentimes will get lost. So. Um, let's pause here for just a minute. I want to thank uh, thank my affiliate sponsor, Cowork Virtual Hub, or Cowork Hub Virtual. I apologize. Uh, they are really shaking the way in in how we look at coworking uh, going forward, especially through COVID. Here, they have taken and built an entire coworking space online, virtual. You can join it from hopefully when your Starbucks opens your favorite Starbucks location and have your virtual meetings in an office like setting. You can also visit and hang out with other people that are on the platform as well. Super, super cool uh, mentality, super, super cool way to look at how co-working will probably exist in the future. Um, Definitely check them out, coworkhubvirtual.com. There's a full tour of the office on the website, and you, there's a contact form there where you can set up your own private tour as well. So uh, we like to thank them for their support of the Winning Tactics podcast. And uh, for those of you that uh, that are just joining back in, you know, we've been we've been really diving down customer how customers are your business, and, and we talked a little bit about what makes those customers unhappy and some of the impacts in your business of customer service outside of just the normal profits and revenue stuff. So let's uh, let's keep the show rolling here, and, and let's talk about some of those ways as a business you can really show your appreciation towards your customer because. Um, I think there's a lot of myths out there that that just you know giving a warm smile as they walk in the door is showing appreciation and in in part it is but but I don't think that's the total picture. <laughs> it's not, but a smile can go a long ways compared to you know a frown or not being acknowledged at all. So um, yes, smile seems so simple and and really like it couldn't help or shouldn't be that impactful, but it really is. And in my clinics, what I what I recommend with my clients and teach my clients is a smile should be part of the uniform for your employees. So they need to have a smile on their face. It's the universal welcome. Um, it immediately puts people at ease just when they see a smiling face. So it's very important. Along those lines, though, I, I, uh, I call booking in book ending the experience for a customer is, is vital too. So that initial experience, that, that, that first impression is always important. We know about that. You know, yep. you can only, you know, you only get one chance to make a, the first impression, a good first impression, but you want to do that consistently, whether it's a new customer or whether it's a, a continuing customer, but that first impression is vital. You want to have a smile, you know, when you have a great greeting, enthusiastic greeting, you know, you welcome them in, those type of things, really put them at ease and make them feel valued, like we've been talking about. Where businesses often miss the boat is on the back end of the of the customer's experience, whether it's a, you know, a long transaction or, you know, in my chiropractic clinics, you know, they were in my office for 15, 20 minutes before they left. But we always wanted to leave them with a great final impression. Um, a great farewell. Hey, we appreciate you. Thanks for coming in today. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next month, whatever the case may be. We wanted to leave them on a positive note because that's the last impression they're going to remember as they leave and go on their, on their way to their life. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that great first impression is important, but if we fall flat on that, that back end impression, again, that, uh, that can taint the, the level of customer service that the, the customer will perceive you you are providing so that's that's an important tactic as well another simple thing to do simple tactic to make your customers feel more valued is to i call it using your manners and basically it's just saying please thank you and you're welcome mm -hmm. um, and and doing that in every form of communication whether it's obviously face to face on the phone but also in email and in text you know, text is is becoming more of a, a vital 
avenue of communication for businesses. Um, and most often texts are just kind of generic, um, you know, as a, a reminder or, or whatever you're using the text for, but how easy is it just to throw a thank you on it or, you know, do this, please, those type of thing. But yeah. when, you, when you use these words, please, thank you, you're welcome, you're making the other person feel valued. You're, you're showing respect. Again, it's just something simple and easy to do, to implement. It takes no training. Just put it in there. But again, it it, it brings up that level of perception that uh, your business is there for those customers. Yeah, I want to I want to tie something into to what you said on the first point about the bookends, right? You you used some specific language. I appreciate you, right? When when they're leaving, and and so I heard this long ago, and I've done it for for quite a while. It is intentionally using the word "you" after appreciate. Not I appreciate what this thing, and not I appreciate what you did. It's I appreciate you, and then fill in the blank. Uh, the intentionality of, of doing it that way sh totally shifts how people perceive it. And I, and I think it's, you know, it's, it's really interesting um, when you start thinking about word choice, which goes into what you're just talking about a little bit, using the please and the thank yous. Um, you know, it's, it's other things like, you know, um, asking for information, not saying, give me, you know, uh, sure. you know, it's, it's those little nuances and language that, that, you know, it can totally change how a message perceive, is perceived, avoiding uh, hard terms like what at the beginning <laughs> of a sentence. You know, um, all those little things add up very, very quickly. And, and that's, you, you've, you've pointed that out, you know, on several different occasions and several different points we've talked about, you know, is, is it, it seems like customer service becomes a, a summation of all those little things that you do. And none of them, none of them are hard, um, right. but you have to do them all, all the time. Exactly. And that's, again, that's the, the cornerstone of my, my programs, my, my consulting is again, just doing the little things, the little simple, easy things, but doing it on a daily basis, on a consistent basis with every customer, every time, every interaction, that's what's going to make the difference. So um, I call it proactive customer service as, as opposed to reactive customer service. So proactive customer service is we've made a choice. We decided to make it a culture. And no matter what's going on, it doesn't matter the day of the week. It doesn't matter if we've had, you know, incredible weather problems. It doesn't matter, you know, if it's if the customer comes in angry, we're going to be proactive. We're going to be try to be the best part of the day. We're going to try to put a smile on their face and take care of them uh, like a like a valued guest. Reactive customer service depends on well, is is you know is it Friday? You know, is it payday? Am I am in a good mood? Is the customer in a good mood? You know, maybe then I'll I'll go ahead and do these things to provide customer service. And that you know that goes back to the consistency. If you're not consistent with it. You're just blowing up the thing, blowing up the whole thing, and you're 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 ruining any kind of great perception that you would you're trying to build if you're not consistent with with the the proper actions each and every day. No, I love that. I I'm a fan of proactive, right? You know, in in everything we do, I, I think in business we spend a lot of time being reactive in, instead of doing the the front end research to to be proactive. And yeah, and I love your thoughts on on proactive customer service, starting with that mentality versus deciding what mentality I'm going to have uh, based on any given circumstance. Right. So uh, I think that's, that's really, really powerful. Um, is there any other tips you have on showing appreciation for customers that, that small businesses can take? Uh, you know, I've got, I've got bunches of them. So uh, another great thing to do is compliments. Compliments, everybody loves a compliment, compliment. And if they say they don't, they're probably lying to you. So, <laughs> but compliments are, are just so valuable um, in making people feel valued and, and important. Um, it's, it's like a, it's like a shot of self-esteem right in the arm when you give somebody a genuine compliment. Um, now you have to be careful. You want to, you know, you want to make it appropriate, obviously, and you don't necessarily want to give a compliment 
you know, same compliment every time. So, you know, again, you got to use your brain and think about it a little bit. Um, but you can give genuine compliments a lot of the times. And it all it takes is being proactive and thinking about it a little bit uh, to give compliments. And again, people just people just love it. You know, we, we live in a negative world, unfortunately, um, and, and we have to be, again, going back to proactive. If we want to stay positive, we really have to, you know, we have to be proactive in looking for the positive and filling our minds with the positive and doing those things. So why not do that for somebody else? You know, and that's exactly what a compliment will do. It will, uh, again, boost self-esteem, boost confidence, um, put a put a positive um spin in their life, so to speak, um, that, that works tremendously well. On, on that line of thinking, something else that uh, my offices did and, and my clients do now is we send out or they send out thank you grams. So basically, it's just a, you know, a compliment on a, on a, on a note to mail to, uh, to a customer or consumer. But we would send them to you know, the post person, the, the UPS driver, you know, the, the patients that were really that we'd look for the ones that were coming in, maybe a little upset or having a problem and, and send them a quick note, um, those type of things. And again, that's just another way to, to cheer somebody up and, and to show value. And I can't tell you how many times a, a patient will come back to our office after they receive that note and just said, hey, that note got to me at the very right time where I was having a bad day, you know, and I read your note and, and just made me feel so, uh, so special. Uh, it didn't change my circumstances, but it just helped me, you know, feel better about myself to handle those circumstances a little bit better. So, those are those are pretty simple and, and easy action items that you can take, and and again, just drive up that level of perception for your customers on you're there for them. Yep. No, I absolutely, I I think the thank you note is is so powerful, and there's so many different ways to apply it, right? Yeah. You know, even if you don't have formal thank you cards. Um, just a little thank you on the back written handwritten on the back of your business card as you hand sure. it to them. Um, you know, you can handwrite on a receipt, you know, or an invoice, you know, Emails, like, text, you know, we, <laughs> <laughs> those are available through your business. Those are easy ways to do it too. So, yeah, you know, I do love, I do love the, the handwritten aspect. You know, if you have that opportunity or that tactileness in your, in your business to be able to do that, I think it, it adds just a, a, a slight level above the the typed text ones, but people, you know, there's people also like getting a phys physical piece of mail. It, 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 yep. You know, it happens so infrequently, so that it's just a nice touch. But again, it that that positivity doesn't get lost in an email or on the back of a card or in the text oh, yeah. either. So yeah, uh, it's because you don't have a formal you know formal note to send out. Don't don't think you can't do it. No, for sure. I, I do like that, though. I, I think it's a great touch. I see a lot of um, like boutique style retailers now when they are doing, you know, especially with the shift to online, um, including handwritten cards in within their packages. I see actually yeah. bigger companies doing this as well. Um, you know, the person that's packing the orders, literally, you know, writing a handwritten note for everything. And, and these are things that take so, you know, such little time, but can make such a huge impact. So um, very, very cool. Uh, we are getting to the end of time. So I always like to wrap up every show with some final thoughts, it, just something that people can take away and action upon in their business from our conversation today. There, I want to give a principle and really my my number one principle for customer service and every business needs to realize this and it doesn't matter what arena you're in what industry you're in online brick and mortar you have to remember this principle you are in the customer perception business doesn't matter what you sell what you're doing you're in the customer perception business so you're creating some kind of perception either good or bad for your customers so you need to think about am i creating a perception that would cause that customer to continue to do business with me or am I creating perception that is not as good and and maybe cause them to uh, look for a competitor to to go do business with them but you have to remember you are in the customer perception business no matter what you're doing and it's your choice to create that good perception that good level of customer service or a bad level of customer service that's going to create a, a positive or negative perception for your customers Absolutely fantastic. I love that tip, uh, or I love that philosophy. 
it's yeah uh ultimately all of this is a is a choice you have to consciously make and the more times you make it the easier it becomes so Absolutely. um thank you so much for your time today i really appreciate all of your nuggets of information uh absolutely fantastic uh information for really shaping your customer experience in your business where can people find you if they want to learn more easiest way to find me place to find me is on my website drkellyhenry.com d-r-k-e-l-l-y-h-e-n-r-y.com you can find out obviously more about me about my programs um, you can find out about my book define and deliver exceptional customer service Basically, it's a customer service manual. It's not a, uh, it's an easy read, 150 pages long, but it's full of just simple actions, ideas, principles that a, a business can take and almost immediately implement and start uh, driving up that better perception of their customer service. So again, define and deliver exceptional customer service. You can set up a call with me so we can talk a little more about uh, your business and if I can help you out. And also on my website, uh, there's a downloadable PDF of my five top actions for any business to help drive up or immediately in increase or improve their level of customer service. So, again, you can find that all there on my website, drkellyhenry.com. And we will make sure we link that all in the show notes as well so you guys can find those links. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. And uh, thank you for all of those that, that listen to this show. We appreciate you and uh, support you. Uh, please support us on all the major podcast platforms as well as YouTube. And you can find more about myself and the show on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Adam. Well, that wraps up yet another episode of the Winning Tactics podcast. You can find Adam on both the LinkedIn and Facebook platforms. And to support the show and ensure the success of the podcast, would you kindly consider visiting Patreon forward slash Adam Sinkus? We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, from the Winning Tactics podcast, remember, culture is how your team behaves when no one is looking. Take good care and thanks for listening.